Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Why can't you have a story? As your I head have, is well, down. Well, she's getting ready for oh, like you. Are head you here for work? <laughs> I jumped oh, yeah. that. You know the belt. Like, are you here for work? I won't answer you. Major headline. Okay, so we'll be the supply of crude oil in Naira <laughs> to the Dangote Petroleum Refinery <laughs> by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company uh, Limited, that's NMPCL, is to last for six months in the first instance, pending a further review by the Technical Subcommittee on Domestic Sales of Crude Oil in Local Currency. So multiple sources from the committee and the Dangote Refinery confirmed uh, on Tuesday that the Naira for crude deal will last only six months in the first phase because crude oil being an international product is priced in dollars. That's where my pain is now. Now, meanwhile, Bloomberg reported on Tuesday that the federal government was set to deliver up to 400,000 barrels of Nigerian crude oil daily to the Dangote Refinery. The report said the development is expected to take place over the next two months, amounting to over... A 24 million barrels of Nigerian crude oil supply between October and November, that's this year. Then all marketers also declared that they had yet to receive any information from NMPC and the Dangote Refinery. You know, they have uh, talked about the fact that they are going to open it up for those marketers to be able to source products directly. They won't just be selling to Dangote, so that at least the market forces can balance everything out and maybe we'll have a reduction in price or feel at the end of the day. But why they are saying that uh, the Naira for crude deal is just for six months is what is worrisome. I thought we're getting to a place where it would just be the norm for us. If you, even if it's an international product, but we have it here. We source it locally. Within us, when we're selling to outsiders, we can sell in dollars, right, to get Forex into our country. But if you are selling to refineries here, shouldn't we just make it a blanket, sell in Naira, so that everything reduces for us as the be best beneficiaries of the product. So. I think we're going to be talking about it later on as well. Okay, let me talk about the, the story concerning um, Nigerians in Lebanon. So as the conflict between Israel and Hezbollah intensifies, Nigerians, the federal government said that they claimed that 500 Nigerians had registered for evacuation. They were speaking, um, the spokesperson for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador H.A. Obe, was saying um, that no fewer than 500 Nigerians had registered with the Nigerian embassy over there for evacuation. However, the presence of Nigerians living in Lebanon said that's untrue or incorrect because according to him, they have over 2,000 Nigerians living there. Well, the 500 that registered were only registered to be identified as Nigerians within the country. That um, it was an ongoing exercise for the past two years to identify the number of Nigerians who are living with documentation and without documentation. So that 500 that is listed is not for evacuation. Mm -hmm. and the federal government is insisting that those 500 are for evacuation. But we'll see. Either way, Nigerians in Lebanon uh, are asking, uh, especially for those who feel threatened by the war between Israel and Hezbollah well, that they need to be evacuated. So we'll see how that goes with the federal government. We now now to Daily Sun. Well, you have a story? I understand, Waiki. Go ahead. Oh, let me let you take your story. <laughs> Go ahead. You are 65. We understand. Keep giving me age. No problem. I will collect Go ahead. I take collect your story. I will wait. We'll wait for you. I wish I was 65. Yeah, you, you, you. Mm -hmm. you are 63. Go ahead. Please take your so, story. The uh, two medical doctors, Michael Adit Atiba and um, Michael Ubeye, they both have Michael. Uh, they are standing in trial in the Kenya High Court. The legal state is um, the, the prosecutor saying that uh, it's about a patient who died under their care. He had fallen down while playing football and um, he injured his leg. From the, the story, he, the leg was swollen, mm. and they said it broke, it torn a ligament. But mm. I, then the, it started to reduce. Said, the mother, he says, she says her, he's her only son, was giving testimony and said that um, he had been calling her and telling her that the leg is, get, is getting better, the leg is getting better. So it doesn't say here how he died or why he died. Mm. Infection. Uh, but it's a story that I would... Maybe it was busy. mismanaged. That's why yeah. United... Really mm. um, sad. Moving on, let's go on to Daily Sun, Wild Wild Rivers. I think um, Nima took story earlier. Over 18,500 Lagosians suffering from tuberculosis. Someone whose wife raises alarm. Anti-graft war recovered funds invested in Nelfon and um, Credit Corps, says President Tinumbu. Don't give our salary to local governments. Union mm. tells federal government. Marketers to finalize petrol price evacuation modalities with Dangote Refinery. Please, who has that NLC story? Nobody took it. No, 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 no. no. Okay, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I have a story here. The wife of the Lagos State Governor, Dr. Ibijoke Songulu, has raised alarm over the prevalence of tuberculosis in the state. 
saying available statistics have shown that the number of people suffering from the deadly infectious disease has surged to 18,541. She said this at the media investiture of female chairpersons of local council wives of the local government area and local council development LCDA chairman and the inauguration of the TV steering committee and stop TV partnership held in Lagos. That happened in Ikeja. And she explained that the investiture of the 10 female chairpersons and 47 chair men's wife of the state, uh, 20 local government areas, 37 local council government uh, development areas, the inauguration of the Stop TB Partnership, Lagos, and the Offfield Lagos Steering Committee on TB was a significant uh, milestone in the collective fight against TB. He also says that, she also said that um, the disease poses a serious threat to public health globally and in the states, which we understand that is already densely populated. And she says, I quote, the role of chairman, the female chairpersons and wives of local government area chairman is crucial as having grassroots advocacy, TB awareness initiatives, advocacy reforms, and sustainable uh, lines to be implemented, sustainable budget lines to be implemented every year to ensure realistic care planning for the community, which they are planning to put in place from the onset. So they will have new inductees that will be educating, promoting health-seeking behavior, you know, talking about the myths of TB and all of that to see how they can reduce the effects in Lagos. So it's a lot of data here on uh, how many people already have it in Lagos, how many people fall ill, uh, close to 3.5 million women, 1.3 million children fell ill. That was worldwide uh, for TB and they narrowed it down to how many persons we have in Nigeria. Uh, about 18,541 in Lagos alone have that TB Okay, so since um, local governments and um, state governors are not trying to, you know, implement what the Supreme Court had ordered about uh, the autonomy of local government, there's a three-committee uh, memorandum that was signed and given to the federal government. So the union, or uh, Joint Action Committee of Local Governments-Based Union, that's the Nigeria Union of Local Government um, Employees, the Nigeria Union of Teachers, and the Nigeria Union of Pensioners, I've told the federal government, we don't worry. Since they too don't want to just send us our money direct from federal government, pay to local government workers direct. Don't pass our money through the local government. Uh, no, that was they should disobey the Supreme Court order. No, be, who, that's what, that's they what they're not, saying. No, they didn't disobey. No, 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 no they're the asking government to disobey. The federal government refused since July 11 yeah. to implement a Supreme Court order that said it was unconstitutional for governors to hold funds yes. allocated to local government. Yes. Mm -hmm. Local government, say, the ones not even say that they, 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 they submit their own mm. to governor. Okay. Uh -uh. And now work as soon as say, follow in line. Pay us our money direct. You say, don't follow. That's what happened. Since but July, they, they I will not in October. They are not. Yeah. The year go yeah. The mm. year go end. <laughs> <laughs> the end go yeah. <laughs> The reason, what I want to bring up from here okay. is that because sometimes with this, this our country, we have this selective no, no, no. We do actually. Uh, the way of no. look, look they at are the not the ones. This is October. They are saying. Ten, mm -hmm. So they are saying that we should disregard that because they are not recognized though by the constitutional. Remember, mm -hmm. local government that the Supreme Court said give local government mm. money well, because direct. the constitution recognizes them. Yes, as a third tier government. The constitution recognizes workers, Murayo. No, but understand, record, but not for you to pay workers that. The you. federal government that went to court yeah. on behalf of local government was the Attorney General of the Federation that went to court on yeah. this. Yes. He got a Supreme Court order mm -hmm. to enforce and come become, be, it can't become yeah. difficult. True. It can't become they difficult. The so then they, they put up 10 man committee on implementation. No, no. At this point, yeah. Kukuba removed my money, pay me direct. Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't, don't pass know. my money up and down. True. Simple. I agree. Uh, so this, so this we pay the teachers too, directly. Uh, no. Everybody should not. We should the rights of every Nigerian. So we need a committee for payment. I ask you to what you don't understand. If on our one mat, let all of us mat. That's implemented. Exactly. That's the we all can continue to be mad like this. No, no, no. Nah, nah. People should nah, do federal government well. should put their mouth where they are. Hey, you know, wow, 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 wow. any other story in point, so should no, I move no, on? No, no, no. the story I wanted to take home. Oh. Okay, our president, he's saying that all the recovered funds, every money he's collecting, all those recovered funds, he's, he's um, investing it in the, um, the social um, programs that he has. That's the NELF, that's the Nigerian Education Loan Fund. And there was another one, the Credit Corp. That's the Nigerian Credit Corporation. Those are the two places where all the recovered funds are going to. He was speaking at an event. Yes, it was a workshop um, organized by, um, for justices and judges, organized by the EFCC in conjunction with um, uh, National Judicial <laughs> Institute. 
So yesterday was saying that all the recover funds he's getting from all Nigerians that was. I thought the president was in London. Of course, maybe he, maybe he had. Can speak from there now. He got a letter. He can speak anyway. <laughs> but pretty much, so those of you always say that all the recover funds, where is it going? He's going to Nell Fund and he's going to Credit Corp. Okay. That's what the I knows. just wondered because I knew he was on leave. Mm. Okay. Moving on now, okay, we have, we, have, we have just one more paper. Vanga, let's see, find a story we've not taken. Court reduces bill to 5 million naira for hashtag NSAS governance uh, protesters. Uh, let's find another story. Tinubu committed to food security. Uh, malnutrition, FG, can World Bank unite to save 11 million children? And, um, yeah, which other story? Which story haven't talked about? Okay, so the head bad governance, um, the court had initially put bill for about 10 protesters on, uh, at 100 million, but the court has now varied the bill terms to 5 million. This money, not be money where they go pay cash before people will say. It's just, you know, very making it easier for them to meet their bill terms and then um, granting them bill. So basically that's what it's about. The answers had bad governance protesters that were arrested um, August 1st. Have, have, some of them are still in detention and uh, um, unable to meet some of their bill terms, which of course made the court very it to five million yesterday. Now. Hey, that is all we can take on today's review. When we come back on to our next segment, stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. <laughs>